Good morning, darlings. It's been a long time since I've actually seen you. I'm going to keep on with these audio-only podcasts. I like them. So today we're going to talk about our frequency and what you can do to raise it up and um, the awareness of when it's not raised up. So today this is centered around conversations. So this conversation is going to illumine you and make you aware of certain things. But I bet that there's many conversations that you have in your life that do not do that for you at all. That there's no depth to them. That they're uh, completely surface level. And anything that is really surface level tends to be of a low frequency. You know what I'm saying? So you are constantly, moment by moment, second by second, and I have to tell you this. If you are struggling through something, if there's some type of, let's say, addiction or some kind of bad habit or something like that that you've been trying to quit and you haven't been successful in it, you are probably compartmentalizing your days as days, right? And as soon as, you know, something happens, four o'clock, three o'clock, two, whatever, as soon as something happens on this day, um, then you're like, oh, screw it. I guess we got to go. We'll start again tomorrow, right? Because you're expecting a perfect day because you're compartmentalizing your days. Here's the trick to it. This is how you quit. Is that it is moment by moment, second by second, you can choose something new for yourself. So just because, let's say that, here's my example, you're trying to lose weight and you want a perfect day. Um, okay, and then you have a chocolate bar at four o'clock, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's all about your thinking, by the way. But let's say that you have something and you don't feel great about it and you're like, oh, screw it. And so then the rest of your day, you're like, I'm going to eat all the cookies, all the, all the, you know, whatever it is. If you didn't view your day as a day and you voted, viewed it as a moment, then we don't need to wait until tomorrow to start over, right? We can start right now in this second and be like, just because I did that one minute ago, 30 seconds ago, doesn't mean I need to continue to do it right now. Doesn't mean I need to be in that low vibe. And you can choose something. You can make a decision for yourself that's going to make you feel better. Because the reason why you thought of that you should quit that thing or that you should do something else is because you should. You know, you're your own advice. And so if you're thinking, oh, maybe I should quit this. Maybe I should do this. Yes, you should do that. Yes, you should quit that. Listen to yourself. Trust yourself. Now, when we're in a low vibe, Here's my example of a conversation. You go to work, somebody comes up to you and they got, they got low vibes. It's not their fault. They probably don't even know what low vibes are. They don't even know what's happening. They don't even know, but they come up to you and they start complaining, maybe about a customer that just happened to be there and they're bad mouthing them. So if you previous to this were in a heightened state of like, Oh, I feel good. You know, things are great. And then this, so you're here and this person comes over and they're having this conversation with you. Well, they're not having a conversation like this. No. You're having a conversation like this. Or maybe you're kind of meeting here. Either way, it's taking you off of here. Now, you were manifesting at this level. They come in, they have this conversation. You're now manifesting at this level. For the duration of that conversation, maybe it's 10 minutes, and then as soon as you leave that conversation, are you going right back up here or are you staying here? Or maybe you're going a little bit up. You need to be very aware of the people in your environment and what it is that you're doing to your energy. See, I didn't even consider this a couple years ago, but it was in fact the deciding factor that made me leave my ex a long time ago. I've been going on vacations, um, going up to my cabin, going into these, you know, I'm going here to get enlightened and it would happen. So every time that I would leave to the cabin, I'm like all pumped. I'm all excited. I'm like, oh, this is going to be so good. So I'm leaving town and I'm like high vibing, but I think that I'm high vibing because the divine's like, yay, you're coming. This is so great. Good. It's going to be good. Our relationship with everything outside of us is one-sided. So when, why this was happening was not because the divine's like, yay, pull me up there. No. What was actually going on was I was leaving my environment. And as soon as I left my environment, oh, 
that I went up, but this didn't click into me until I was going on a different vacation to a different place. And the same thing happened to me. As soon as I'm leaving town, all of a sudden my vibe goes up and I'm like, oh, and it hit me because I'd been doing this. I'd been going for a long time, for a long, long time. And this happened every single time, but this was different because I left and I wasn't going to that same place and I wasn't going on a family vacation. I was going by myself. I left and it was literally on the outskirts of town that all of a sudden I'm high vibing. And I realized, man, it's my environment. So my one daughter had said something to me one day. We had this hoodie incident. I had been jumping on the trampoline, super hot, to take off my hoodie, tied around my waist. We call it a bunny hug if you're in Saskatchewan. We used to anyways. Um, so I go in to meditate. You know, at that time, I think I was doing the gateway projects too. But I go in to meditate and I'm always following the body. This is how I work with my clients. So I do it for myself. I talk to myself in third person when I'm doing hypnotherapy on myself. So I lay down, go to meditate, and I feel this tension around my guts. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And I must have taken about 10 minutes, about 10 minutes to open my eyes and realize, oh, there's no tension. I have a hoodie tied around my waist. And it was like, I immediately just started laughing. So my one daughter hears me laughing, comes down the hallway and she's like, what's going on? And I'm like, dude, I'm an idiot. This is what I did. And she starts laughing. And then she comes over and she says, yeah, you know, Sometimes it is your environment. And this was the first time that I had considered that because I was trying to fix absolutely every single thing within me. If you don't know my story, um, look it up. Um, I was betrayed and I was severely, and I had been married for ever, for again, 18 years with him for 24. And I was trying to like fix this betrayal but only within myself thinking that this is possible like oh if I can just forgive and I can just this then everything will just be fine it'll just go back to the way that it was before um impossible not happening it doesn't happen um but I'm so thankful I'm so thankful that that happened I'm thankful for him that he did that I'm thankful all of the things I'm so thankful that that happened because I needed that to happen in my life at the time it was the worst thing ever I wanted to die for six months I was like my life is over you know because my life was over as I knew it. So I had to grieve that. Um, so this had been, you know, I had been in full awareness of what had actually happened for about a year and a half when I decided to leave because I realized, and it was, you know, her saying that to me that made me think that for the first time was like, oh, you know, maybe it is, maybe it is my environment. Maybe I can't do this all on my own, you know, because I need these people to lift up too, and they just weren't willing to do that. Weren't willing to understand that um, the bad that they were putting out, they just didn't realize, you know, that this is gonna come back. And I, it was so detrimental to my spiritual growth that I couldn't do it for a moment longer. And so I imagine um, it was when I made that decision that my energy just went up and then it no, no longer was impacted by the environment in the same way because I knew I was getting out. So if you have somebody in your life or at your work and you want to be up here and they're always down here, it doesn't... Here's the deal. As you grow you let things go because you realize they're not serving you anymore. And if you allow things in your environment that cause you confusion and chaos and destruction within you, that's not your, that's not it. There will be clarity, clarity when you've let go of the chaotic energies, you will have clarity. So if you're in confusion about something, you clearly need clarity about it. Here's how you get it. Meditate. 
sit there and meditate and work through your emotions. Now, sometimes we deny our emotions that we have within us. Let's say, say you have this person at work. You want to be high vibe. So you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, you, you, you realize the drain that this person is pulling on you. They're sitting outside your office saying negative things all day long. And you're just like, man, like I can't even do this. Ugh. This is the universe's way of telling you this ain't for you, man. It's not for you. But you cannot leave that environment and not heal that and go to a different environment and expect a different result. So you do have to do the work. But once you've done the work and you've gotten to that place of peace of like knowing, okay, I know I need to leave this workplace. I know I need to leave this relationship. I know I need to leave this friend group. I know I need to leave whatever it happens to be, a belief. You will have clarity about it. But here's the thing. It's divine timing. You will get it at the exact right time and not a moment sooner and not a moment later either. It's all divine timing. And when you know, you'll know. And I remember I used to drive my friends crazy because I was like, what do I do? What do I do? They knew my situation that I had going on. You know, I mean, they knew it. And I'm like, what do I do? And I'm so confused. And my one friend, lover, she's like, you'll know when you know, and not a moment sooner. And then that'll be that. You'll know, and there will be no going back. And that was exactly what happened. But I needed to stay in the environment that I was in for as long as I did so that I could leave and not be questioning myself, knowing I put in the effort, I tried, I, and it, it's not for me. Like I took enough time to know it's not for me. And the confusion immediately left, immediately left. I remember leaving the country and that's what I do. We break up, I'm leaving the country. Just kidding. I, I'm not actually. Um, so I'm leaving the country and I remember I just couldn't stop smiling. I don't think that that's changed. I don't think that that's changed. We're having a serious talk right now, so I'm not. But if I'm just by myself, even if I'm just completely by myself, I still have that joy within me and I will just find myself smiling. On a day when you'd think, what, why? Because I just have so much happiness, so much joy within me because I know I'm on the right path. I don't know exactly what I'm doing day to day, but here's the deal. The divine will tell you moment to moment. The divine will guide you if you listen. And I was told, very specifically told, the, the divine is not a future predictor. The divine is not predicting your future. The divine is a moment, this moment, this moment, this moment. And when you listen to this moment, what should I do in this moment? How many times have you been guided to, mm, mm, I should call this person. Mm, mm, I should go to this place. Mm, mm. And you listen to it and then you called or you went and you did. And they're like, I was just thinking about you. Or you went out and then you met a person and you hadn't seen them in forever. And it's like, oh, I'm so glad to run into you here. How weird. What are you doing here? Right? This is the divine guidance that we get, but only if we listen. Only if we listen. I remember one time I was told, I was told specifically, check for your cell phone, check for your cell phone. I'm leaving, I'm leaving my, um, my friend's house. And it's like, check for your phone. And I remember arguing with myself and be like, no, 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 I got it. I know I got it. I know it's in my purse. I know it's in my pocket. I know it's, I, I, I believed I knew where it was. So I didn't check for it. And I locked the house and then I left and then I dropped the key in the mailbox and I was like, I'm good. And then I go out to my car and I go to make a phone call on my car. I'm like, why can I not make a phone, phone out of range? What? And I had locked my phone and that, why didn't I listen? Why didn't I listen? I didn't listen because I needed to not listen that time so that I could know in the future, I better freaking listen when something like that happens. So now it doesn't matter how weird it gets. Go up and talk to that guy and go tell him this. All right, I'm going to go up and I'm going to talk to that guy and I'm going to go tell him this. 
I listen every single time now because before when I didn't, it harmed me. And it inconvenienced everybody else, right? Well, now they got to get me my phone out of their place and drive here in the middle of a work day. And it's a pain in the butt, right? And it didn't only inconvenience me because I wasn't listening. It inconvenienced other people. When you were told that you need to do something, you need to do that thing because you then are that earth angel that is helping other people. If it's something totally random and weird that you wouldn't normally think of, then that's definitely the thing you need to do because you didn't you didn't think of it. You don't think of those random weird things. So when that comes into you, it's time to take action and go and do that thing. I got to make this short here today because I got to talk in about 10 minutes um, that I got to do with the Vancouver Rotary Club. Excited. I did a talk yesterday too with uh, Chamber here and it was wonderful um so if you want to lift your vibe be aware of your environment what is it doing to you who are you giving your time to who are you talking to how do you feel when that text come through and you're like oh why are you putting up with it why are you doing it delete block or just hey man i don't got time for this hey man you're dragging me down if you're really honest with the people that are in your life then they'll be honest with you too. And then you're going to find your people because let them go. The ones that aren't yours, let them go. They're taking up the space. You only got this much and your energy's going here and it's going here and it's going here all day long. It's going here, but you only got this much. And so if these people over here who are just not doing it for you, they're creating chaos and confusion for you, let them go. And then you got all this energy here to attract something new and wonderful, confusion-free into your life. Doesn't that sound wonderful? But you can't do it until you've let this thing go. Can't do it. You don't get the energy for it. It actually won't manifest for you. You need the space. Somebody says, oh, I want to start doing this, but they don't get the time and they don't get the space. Are they going to do it? They're not going to do it. They have to let something go in order for something new to come in. Right? You might have your friends. Maybe you got a million friends. How much energy is that taken up? Are they truly? Do they got your back? Are they really your friends? Because if they aren't, are you wasting your time? Are you wasting your energy? When your people are out there and they're just like, where's my people? And you're like, where's my people? And when you let these people go, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, there they are. You can't do it until you let something go. And if something's causing confusion and chaos, then you need to figure that out because something's not right. And I bet if that confusion and chaos is there, you're not basing it off the truth, right? Okay, I love my job, but I have to work with this negative person. I can't take it. Confusion. There's some kind of miscommunication that is happening. Like, hey, you know what? Your negativity is driving me insane and it's dragging me down. And every time that I talk to you, it makes me feel really horrible. Are you okay? Can I help you in some way? I'm sorry, guys. You know what? I have to go. I'm getting a phone call and it's about the talk that I'm doing in 10 minutes. So I better actually take it. Um, anyways, it was good to see you guys. I'm probably not going to see you again here for a while because you know what? I just prefer the audio. It's just fun. I like editing. I like just talking and doing the thing, but it was nice to see you guys today. It was super great, my darlings. Anyways, um, I love you all and you take care and I'm going to see you uh, tomorrow.